This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the SEC putting a stake in the heart of crypto. This is definitely pun intended. We're talking about vampires, but we're also talking about proof of stake. I made this video back in September of 2022, warning everyone how indeed the SEC was coming for crypto, and now we're beginning to see the fruits of that. Here's a tweet from Gary Gensler from yesterday talking about how the SEC has just charged Kraken with the unregistered offer and sale of securities through its staking as a service program. This is primarily staking on ETH since the merge. And Gensler says, whether it's through staking as a service, lending, or other means, crypto intermediaries must provide the proper disclosures and safeguards required by our laws. So as a result, Kraken is now going to have to discontinue staking. They will no longer be providing this staking pool service to their clients. And as such, a huge validator for Ethereum is about to disappear. They also paid $30 million in uh, in terms of a fine. Now, the other exchanges are very worried about this. Brian Armstrong, the CEO and founder of Coinbase, tweeting uh, yesterday saying that he's hearing rumors that the SEC would like to get rid of crypto staking in the U.S. for retail customers. He says this would be a terrible path for the U.S. And I think we all know why it'd be a terrible path, because it's not good for Brian Armstrong and it's not good for Coinbase. And as this article points out, this is a huge revenue opportunity. Unfortunately, there's nothing special or new or innovative about staking or proof of stake. As we've talked about many, many times, it really does recreate the fiat financial system, which is also called rule by the rich. Under proof of stake, the more coins you own, the more control you have over the protocol. We've already seen how the large exchanges have become the largest validators uh, on Ethereum and they're, they're enforcing OFAC compliance. So this is one problem with proof of stake and Ethereum really shot itself in the foot by moving to proof of stake as we're gonna see. So under proof of stake, the more coins you own, the more control you have over the protocol. Gary Gensler clearly understands this. This is not true for proof of work protocols like Bitcoin. And that's why Bitcoin has a special place in Gary Gensler's heart because he's actually taught these things and he's one of the few politicians who really understands these things at a fairly technical level. So proof of, st proof of work protocols, the, it doesn't matter if you own more coins, you have no control over the protocol, uh, additional control over the protocol because the Bitcoin miners, they're doing their own thing and you don't need to stake a whole bunch of Bitcoin in order to become a Bitcoin miner. This is one of the huge innovations of proof of work not true for proof of stake coins like Ethereum, Cardano, etc. So this time it's important to it's important to point out that the SEC went after staking as a service, but are you if you're holding Ethereum or Cardano, it's, for example, are you ready for the SEC to go after staking itself? I pointed this out also in September of 2022, how Ethereum may have inadvertently turned itself into a security by moving from proof of work to proof of stake. And I have some links there to Gary Gensler interviews where he points out that people, uh, that staking rewards look a lot like interest income or dividends that are paid by a security. So I think ETH may have really shot itself in the foot by moving to proof of stake and really put itself in the bullseye of the regulators. Here's the biggest lull from today's news though. Kraken, which has been ordered by the SEC to, to wind down its staking service, it cannot even wind it down under the current regime simply because they need to wait for devs at the Ethereum Foundation, which is really a centralized software company that's masquerading as a foundation or decentralized project. The Kraken itself needs to wait for the devs, the Ethereum devs, to enable withdrawals. You still cannot unstake your ETH from the protocol until the Shanghai uh, hard fork goes through. And you can just see the language here. It's, it's, they don't even try to hide it. Ethereum devs plan to enable staked ETH withdrawals by March 2023. You can see how centralized this is. Ethereum core developers have targeted Spring for the network's upcoming Shanghai upgrade. This doesn't sound like a decentralized protocol to me. So this is a funny thing. The SEC is telling Kraken they need to wind this down. Kraken cannot wind it down until the Ethereum devs enable the withdrawal button. This, If you want to read more about this, I'll link to the Kraken blog post that talks about this. All staked ETH will become unstaked after the Shanghai upgrade, which devs and Vitalik say is going to happen in March of 2023 of this year, but it may be delayed as the merge was delayed as well. So you can read more about that. A reminder for those who haven't recognized the difference yet between Bitcoin 
and crypto in general, Bitcoin is very, very special. It had this immaculate conception and Bitcoin fails the Howey test, which in this case is a good thing you want to do. If you pass the Howey test, that means you're security and you need to register with the SEC in the US. Bitcoin, by contrast, is a digital commodity. It's not issued by any corporation. There wasn't some pre-mine. There wasn't some foundation in Switzerland or Japan that issued it, as we had with Ethereum and Cardano. Bitcoin is a digital commodity, not issued by any corporation or government, and it's secured by proof of work, which is this very neutral and clever way of doing things. By contrast, Ethereum, Cardano, and all these other coins are all unregistered securities. And as I've said many times, the SEC is coming for all of them. Now, whenever I make a video like this, I always get pushback saying, it's not a big deal. Ethereum and Vitalik and Joe Lubin, they can just register with the SEC. They can just pay a large fine. But I don't think people realize what this involves. It's much, much worse than that for, for coins like Ethereum or Cardano, or, or really all of these coins, all of these unregistered securities that are gonna need to register with the SEC if they wanna maintain access to the deep capital pools in the US. Not only will they have to pay large fines, but as part of registering with the SEC, Ethereum will almost certainly need to disclose all material information related to the project's principles, people like Vitalik and Joe Lubin, their holdings, how much ETH they hold, prospects, risks, all these undisclosed things that people don't know is are going on inside of the company. These disclosures will almost certainly lead to arrest to the exits by investors once they see the huge amount of self-dealing and probably outright fraud as well. When you file to go public as a company, you file an S1, and I expect there to be a similar document that all of these coins are gonna to need to file. And they're gonna to need to make these material disclosures if they hold anything back and they don't disclose anything, everything, then they risk spending time in a US jail. So this is gonna be very, very bad. By contrast with Bitcoin, there's no one to sue. There's no foundation, for example, and it really is this highly, highly decentralized protocol uh, by contrast. And as we've said, this is something that Gary Gensler understands really well. So the writing is on the wall. I know there's still some of you who own Ethereum. I don't know how you own it. I don't know how you sleep at night knowing what is coming down the pike. If you wanna learn more about what's so bad about ETH being a security and this whole registration process, I will link to this video in the description notes below. Meanwhile, though, if you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button hit the like button, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.